Hello, everyone. This is Harriet Westmore. I am the creator and the producer of the podcast, More Wine and Music, the music and podcast where I discuss American genre over a glass of wine. I want to welcome everybody to season four. This is episode number one. This is the season where I will be discussing genre of the 1960s. And so with that being said, let's just jump right on in. Oh, before I do, um, please click the like and subscribe to um, Spotify, iHeart, Apple Podcasts, all the other um, podcast content platforms. Hit that like and subscribe button. I really would appreciate it. And the wine that I um, suggest, which is very good, I like predominantly red wines, but I do drink white wines. But this is a red wine. It's called Sonoroso, Sweet Red. And I got this from a restaurant that my husband and I had uh, went to last week for Valentine's Day here in Ohio. So shout out to the Corkscrew in Medina, Ohio. Um, And for this wine, it's called Sonoroso, Sweet Red. It was very good. All right, so let's get into today's first episode. And this group that I chose is pretty much kind of, it's, they're known, they were known, but kind of a little bit underrated and under the radar. And that was the Marcells. Okay. So the Marcells were, you know, was an American doo-wop group. They were from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. They were a group of uh, four boys that were friends in high school. And what was so unique about these young men that they were interracially, uh, it was an interracial group. Um, Their names were, the lead singer was Fred Johnson and Gene, his brothers, Gene and Ronald. Uh, Fred, he was a vocal, he was the lead vocal and he played guitar. William Webb, he was a, a vocal and he also played guitar. Richard Naus was the vocal, but he played bass. And Cornelius Harp, who was also vocals and played the saxophone. So all these boys, these young men, they were vocalists as well as um, instrumentalists. So they played and sang at the same time. They uh, attended the Olive High Olive, Oliver, I'm sorry, Oliver High School uh, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And they the group was formed in 1959. So they became popular during um, their, uh, during 1959 to 1960. And it was in 1960 that they caught the attention of a uh, A&R man who was uh, working for Cold Picks record. His name was Julius Cresper. And he caught the attention. They caught the attention of this man. And he um, decided to, uh, he liked what he's heard, obviously. And he decided to um, become their manager. I don't know if it was due to their age of still being young, underage, even though they were high school age. But um, he had to sneak them to uh, record in New York. So I guess he brought them into New York um, and into the studio to record a song. And the song that they recorded, um, it was a song that was already out, but they took their own little spin to it. Um, They took the song and rewrote it, um, gave their own little twist. They rearranged the music and added their own ad-libs and unique style. And this song in 1961 was their first single and the pretty much their major hit, which was called Blue Moon. And the success was immediate. Um, it reached um, number one on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. And after that, that song that was recorded by them, um, it really uh, became popular 
to where other artists is, uh, also covered that particular song um, because of the Marcells. Um, their follow-up success, um, in addition to Blue Moon, was uh, Heartaches, Goodbye to Love, and Let's Make Love Tonight. Um, they often did cover popular tunes, and they also were backing, there were background uh, groups to uh, acts such as um, Marvin Gaye, The Temptations, and Smokey Robinson. But like I said, um, as much and as popular, quickly popular as they were, they just didn't have their footing to where their success was long jeopardy, if you know what I mean. Um, unfortunately, uh, they couldn't gain the popularity from Blue Moon uh, throughout the 60s. So by mid-60s, the group's popularity had begun to wane off, and in 1967, they disbanded. But ironically, their legacy uh, still lives on it and moves, you know, even today. They even um, got together later on in life uh, and, you know, did some old uh, oldies but goodies type shows you know, throughout the country. So they weren't that much forgotten. It's just that their, their group just didn't have that longevity as the other groups of the 60s. So, but I wanted to um, bring them to attention to, you know, they're, they may have been short-lived, but they their songs were certainly not forgotten. So um, even... Um, even, like I said, even though they weren't popular, popular like they were from their first um, single, single hit of Blue Moon, they did, you know, perform throughout the 60s and 70s. And um, they are still pretty much, uh, those who are still remaining, they still are together today. And they were inducted into the Vocal Group Hall of Fame in 2001. And a lot of their songs actually have been covered by um, other artists, you know, like I said before, other artists, but mainly um, to name a few were The Beatles, Elvis Presley, and The Who. So this is a very short video because um, they were a very short-lived group, but they made a mark in 1960, in the 60s, nevertheless. So that was the um, group, the Marcells. So um, there you have it. Um, I, I really wanted to um, give homage to groups that have made their mark, even though they might not have been as popular as most of the well-known groups that we are, are familiar with. But they're like, like I said, nevertheless, they are still... Um, they are still important and they gave us good music as, you know, as a lot of the others as well. So if you like this uh, podcast, please continue to listen. I'm going to be um, recording more um, probably within the next two weeks would be episode number two. I haven't decided who yet, but please stay tuned. And then if you're interested to hear all the other, the past season, season one, two, and three, you can check it out on the website as more, M-O-O-R-E, wineandmusic.com. And I have all the other uh, podcast episodes that I had uh, recorded through um, different genres from the beginning, the beginning of the blues up until... Uh, the 50s of the rock and roll era. So, okay, so I, that's it for now. So I will talk to you soon and um, be safe. Bye.